Okay, here's the problem solving video for problem uh, uh, 1.24 in uh, the text. And the problem statement says find the power that is absorber supplied by the network elements. And let's make a quick review. And if you review chapter 1, you'll notice that the passive sign convention was discussed. And if you'll look in the diagram here, we have the voltage labeled for the circuit, current labeled, and as discussed in chapter 1, if we take the product of V times I, that's a power, and if the variables satisfy the passive sign convention, that's going to give us a power absorbed. So if we are doing calculations, and we have the current entering the plus terminal of the voltage, flowing out the negative, that's a passive sign convention, that's going to give us the power absorbed. If it doesn't fit that convention, then it's going to give us the power supplied. So now let's go back to our circuit. And we have the elements uh, there. We have the voltages and currents. Let's start uh, with element 1. Okay. And here's element 1 on our diagram. Notice that the current is entering the plus terminal of the voltage, leave the negative terminal, so it's flowing from plus into the element, out to minus, so the power for that element, or that element satisfies the passive sign convention, so if we take the product of V and I, that's going to be the power absorbed, so the power for element 1 then is 6 times 1.5, and that's going to be 9 watts, and that's absorbed because we know that satisfies the passive sign convention. Now, let's look at element 2. Okay, element 2 is shown here in the diagram. Okay, the current flowing through element 2 is... 1.5 amps in that direction. So again, note that the current enters the positive, leaves the negative. So for element two, where the variable satisfy the passive sign convention, so the power then is nine times 1.5, which is 13.5 watts absorbed. And we know that's absorbed because it satisfies the passive sign convention. Now, let's look at the 12-volt source over on this side of the, the uh, network. And if we look at the 12-volt source, let's note that the current is entering the plus terminal, leaving the minus terminal. So the voltage and current for that element satisfy the passive sign convention. So if we multiply V and I together, that's going to be the power absorbed. So we have 12 times 1.5 to give us 18 watts absorbed. Okay, And if we look at this so far, we have 40.5 watts absorbed. Now, let's look at the dependent source, okay, which is shown here. And if we look at our circuit, we're told that Ix is equal to 1.5. Okay, so for our dependent voltage source, then we know that... Uh, the voltage up there is 2IX, so that's 2 times 1.5, and that's 3 volts. So that's the value of that source. Okay, so there's the value of that source. And now if we notice, the current is entering the minus and leaving the positive. Now that's opposite uh, our passive sign convention. For our passive sign convention, we've had current entering the plus and leaving the minus. This is the opposite. 
So this element must be supplying power. And if we take the product of V and I, we'll get 3 times 1.5, which is 4.5 watts supplied. Okay, so for the dependent voltage source, it's supplying 4.5 watts. Now our last element is the 24 volt source. So for the 24 volt source, again let's look. The current is entering the minus, coming out of the positive. That's the opposite of our passive sign convention. Uh, if we go back to the 12 volt source, we see that current enters the positive and leaves the negative. Here, current enters the negative and leaves the positive. So this source is also supplying power. So then we have P is equal to 24 times 1.5, which is 36 watts supplied. And if we look at the total power supplied, that's 40.5 watts. And we know that the power supplied has to equal to the power absorbed.